This is the new Honda HRV, and it's a little bit like the Harry Potter character Neville Longbottom, because the old version was a little bit kind of awkward looking and uh, weird. Whereas this has now developed into a handsome looking thing. Now in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this car. I'm gonna talk you around the exterior, the interior. I'm gonna see how practical it is. I'm gonna take it for a drive. And of course, I'm gonna launch it to see how quick it is from zero to 60 miles an hour, because that really matters to Honda HRV bars. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon. That way you won't miss a single upload. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start this video by talking about the design of the new HRV. I like the back end. It's nice, quite swoopy and sporty. Cool looking light bar. Other than that, it's simple. It's good. Alloy wheel sizes. 18 inches are standard, no other sizes available, but they are large enough. Now, if you go for the range stopping version, you get a contrasting roof and door mirrors, but you don't need them. I like it the way it is. Here at the front, this headlight design and this bit here sort of is a little bit mastery, and I mean that in a good way. Favorite bit though is the grille design. Rather than having silver trim or black trim, they've done it body colored and it just looks smart. I really like the look of this car, actually. The starting price of the HRV is 28,000 pounds. Honda's designers are doing a great job here on the inside of the HRV as well. Really like the design of the dash. Materials are pretty nice here in the front as well. It's all very logically laid out. I like the fact they haven't put everything through the touchscreen, so you can still access the heater controls quickly using these dials, but the touchscreen itself is quite easy to use. Unlike Honda systems of the past, and you've got Apple CarPlay, which is wireless, and Android Auto, which is wired. You've got a part digital driver's display. I don't know why they didn't just make it all digital and have a digital speeder as well as the digital other bits and pieces that you've got, and you can cycle through the different menus on that screen over on the left, which is okay. Driving position is generally pretty good with a decent amount of adjustment in it. And yes, you can raise the seat up quite high if you want to as well, or get it low enough. I like this feature that you get with Japanese cars. Quick release for the seat back. So you can just like, ah, oh, go into a sleeping position like that, or get it exactly where you want it. I don't know why European cars have to have that annoying ratchet thing. It's pointless. In terms of practicality, we've got some decent storage under here. There's some big cup holders here, which will hold a flask. There's some more storage under here with a 12 volt socket. You've got a place for your mobile phone there and two USB ports there. The glove box is a decent size and the big door bins there as well, which is good. Here in the back of the HRV, it's a tale of two halves. So the good is that knee room, there's loads of it, foot room, loads of space you can really stretch out. The seats themselves are comfortable. Also, you've got a pretty much flat floor, so there's lots of foot space, even for the middle seat passenger, which brings you onto the things that aren't so good about the back seats. This central seat is so narrow and uncomfortable to sit on. And then there's the headroom. I'm sitting up straight, I'm like five foot ten and a bit, and I've got that much space above my head, which isn't loads for this type of vehicle. In fact, a Nissan Qashqai feels roomier in the back seats. Not awful though, and there are some redeeming features like big pocket backs there, look with a special compartment to keep your mobile phone in there. And then you've got two USBs there and a little place to put your phone while it's charging if you want to leave it. But then things get bad again. For instance, look, there is no through loading. This is all floppy and not great. And cup holders, yeah, they're okay, I guess. You've got easy access Isofix angle points there though, which is good. What's not so good though is that children will find it a bit claustrophobic here in the back because the windows are quite narrow and you know, if you want to take them down, they don't go all the way down. So yeah, it's not ideal, though I guess the kids will just be on their mobile devices anyway, won't they? Let's move on to the boot of the HRV. God, that takes ages, come on. Right, so it's quite a useful square shape. There's not much of a load lip to lift stuff over. Look, it's like in and out quite easily, which is good. Oh, look, you get this special rubberized mat, which is handy if you have dirty pets that you carry in your boot and they won't mess up. Oh, let me get this out, <laughs> if I can. They won't mess up your carpet. Now, the boot capacity itself, actually, when you look at the numbers, isn't that great? So you've got 320 litres of space. By comparison, a Peugeot 2008 has 435 litres of space. You have about 20 litres of that space. Is this storage could be under here. But if you have the range shopping version of this car, you then get a subwoofer that goes in there and it reduces your boot capacity to 304 litres of space. And interestingly, the boot capacity of a Peugeot 208 is 311 litres. This isn't so bad though, look, you can fold the seats down quite easily and then you get a completely flat floor, which is handy when you're sliding things in and out 
like that. In terms of features in the boot, there aren't much. There's a couple of tie down points there and a couple of hooks, but there's no 12 volt socket. I do like a 12 volt socket in the boot of a car because then you can plug in an electric vacuum and then vacuum out bits and pieces. Anyway, that brings me to five annoying things about this Honda HRV. Then brakes can make quite a bit of noise when you're either in stop start traffic or maneuvering. Have a listen to this. So what's that about? Tell you what I hate. A blooming roof mounted rear seat belt. Look, it's just why can't this mount it there like other manufacturers do? The central armrest is pretty rubbish if you're the driver because neither does it extend nor does it like stick up so you can't actually hold the wheel properly and rest it elbow on it so you have to drive like that that's actually how my mum drives but it's not a very good way to drive i don't know what it is with hondas but look even when the car's unlocked the fuel filler cap isn't you actually have to pull a lever so in here bear with me pull this oh just an unnecessary faff. I don't know why they can't have auto release like you get on European make cars. For some reason there are no rear door bins. Brilliant. You do have a little cup holder there but it's not particularly large nor deep. You can just about hold a small bottle but there is a sign there that says no open top drinks. You know you can have just an open top drink in other cup holders in this car but not here. Reason being that the liquid might spill then get into that switch and knacker it. However that brings me on to five cool things about the Honda HRV. Have you ever given a lift to an annoying passenger who wants the cabin heated quickly, but they don't like the blower, like blowing in their face? Like, oh no, look, oh, I don't like the air right in my face. Well, Honda has a solution. It's this diffuse air system. So you turn this dial and look, it's not blowing in their face anymore. Instead, it's going down the side of their heads like that. Still heating the cabin quickly, but not in an annoying way. Standard equipment is very good. All models get auto cruise control, so it'll keep you a safe distance from the car in front using radar, and you've got auto steer to keep you in lane as well. Plus, there's parking sensors as standard at the front and the rear, and a reversing camera. Look, there, all there. Nice. I quite like Honda's solution for the low cover for the HRV because, look, here it is. <laughs> it's kind of clever. Right, see if I'm clever enough to figure out how it goes on. Never done this before. Can an idiot do it easily? Yes, an idiot definitely can. Look, there we go. Lovely jibbly. See, I'm totally idiot. It's, it's operated that way. Go away now. Want to use your car as a tunnel? Well, look at this. Honda's magic seats allow you to lift the bases and lock them in place so then you can walk through your car because it's really, really essential for most buyers. You know how in the winter your windscreen wiper blades get stuck to the windscreen with frost? Well, not in this car because look, there's some special heat elements there. So you press a button in the cabin and it'll actually heat those elements up and it'll free your wiper blades from Jack Frost's fingers. Now let's talk about the engine and gearbox combinations of which there are so many with the Hunt HRV. It's so confusing. Actually, it's not, it's dead easy. There is only one choice. It's a 1.5 litre petrol engine mated to two electric motors, though both the electric motors and the petrol engine all work together to drive the front wheels only. This is not four wheel drive and they operate through a CVT automatic gearbox. Now the output of the system is 130 horsepower and we'll see exactly how quick that means this car is when I launch it a little bit later on to time it from 0 to 60 miles an hour. One engine, gearbox and drive combination and there's only three trim levels as well. So dead easy to choose your ideal car. Okay, let's see what this Honda HRV is like to drive. Starting off with at lower speeds and in town. So when you're just pootling along, then the car will figure out exactly what it should do and it will drive in electric power for as much as it possibly can. It's silent, it's effortless, it's easy. And the steering's nice and light, which is good for maneuvering in town. And the towing circle's okay, it's 11.3 meters. It's competitors like a Peugeot 2008 and a Skoda Kamik do have tighter turning circles, but it's fine. Fine, look, you see. The brakes, they feel quite natural. Sometimes in hybrids, they can feel a little bit grabby at times, but not this one. And of course, when you're braking, you'll see from the energy flow meter there that we're putting some energy back into the battery. Oh, do you notice that? That was the engine cutting in. Now, you do not feel the engine cut in at all. You really don't, but you hear it because it, it's not the smoothest engine. It's a little bit coarse. 
And that brings us to the suspension. You see, it's really very comfy, nice over bumps, but you do hear the suspension. So I'm just gonna go over these bumps up here and you'll hear it go, dug -out, dug -out, dug -out. here we go, here's some bumps. Yeah? So it deals with them well, it's just quite noisy. Then there's another thing that's noisy. So once you get out of town, or say if you're in town, you suddenly need to like nip through some lights or something. So you've got to put your foot down, this happens. The engine just makes a noise like the clutch is slipping and it really complains and it's quite noisy that is. That's a real shame. Oh, it's just like puts you off and putting your foot down. No, the handling is actually pretty decent. So it goes around corners well enough. I wouldn't call it sporty, but then these cars aren't supposed to be. But it does the job. But once again, you're never gonna have any fun because as soon as you think, oh, I'm gonna accelerate out this corner, there it just holds the revs it does change gear well simulate changing gear because it's not really changing gear. it just simulates it because it doesn't have actual step gears but oh it's all confusing automatic gearbox is generally easy to live with apart from the fact of it just makes all that noise i keep on going about the noise 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 really that's anything that lets his car down oh and the fact that if you go for an suv you probably want a big windscreen and the windscreen is actually smaller than you imagine still you've got some big door mirror so you get a good view out of those and the view out the back window is pretty good as well so all around visibility is pretty decent in this car and it's overall a nice thing to drive do you know what though i guess the trade-off for that noisy cvt system is the fact that this is an economical car honda says it will do 67 miles per gallon i'm averaging 53 though i reckon that if i was more careful with my driving and wasn't busy trying to demonstrate how noisy <laughs> the gearbox and engine combination is i'd have done better than that but still 53 miles per gallon is pretty good honda says this hrv will do 0 to 60 miles an hour in 4.8 seconds and the standing quarter mile in 13.3 pretty impressive but we'll see exactly what it does with my specialist timing gear here so i'll just whack it into sport mode sport mode is engaged let's do this hold on the brake Oh yeah, it's really fast pickup. Ah, oh, that engine's really singing. 0 to 60, 8.67 seconds. Bit slower than what they claim. And the quarter mile, 16.82 seconds. Actually, <laughs> I was lying, obviously, with those times. Honda says this thing will do 0 to 60 in 10.7 seconds, but it's actually, it's like two seconds quicker than they said. 8.67 seconds is quick for this kind of car. I remember hot hatches back in the 80s would be doing well to do that. So then what's my final verdict on the Honda HRV? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the HRV. Okay, so it's not the most practical car in its class and it can be a bit noisy when you put your foot down, but overall, it's a great looking thing that's nice to drive.